let's get to why we're here, season two, High School Musical. Just let the folks know, where are we picking up from? Yeah, so we actually pick up exactly right where we left off. You know, uh, Ricky and Nini finally get back together after their opening night. It's this big, you know, this, uh, I, lo I love you scene and, and, and all that stuff. And so we're now literally right after they finish their opening night um, at their Christmas break. And uh, lots of crazy stuff happens. We're going we're gonna to have to tune in for all the craziness, so I won't yes. make it go too deep there. But the opportunity to write and perform solo songs for the series, that's mm -hmm. got to feel great to be able to have that freedom to do it. What goes into that process for you? What do you love most? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's really cool sort of putting myself in another pair of shoes and, and writing from a perspective that's not my own. Um, while still funneling my own truth into it because that's the only way to do it, you know? So it's cool to work with like Tim Federley, the showrunner who will call me and be like, hey, this is what we're trying to achieve. Like, are you are you down to write this? And as soon as he called me and told me about it, I was like off to the races. And I think I wrote like eight or nine verses before I found the best two, you know? And sometimes you just got to keep writing and writing until the best stuff sort of comes to the top. So, you know, it's fun to work on a project like music-wise that's not my own. Yeah, no, you get to like explore do other things out there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to go back. This is for all the fans out there. I know that you said we're picking up where we left off. Um, you ended on a high note there with the two, mm -hmm. with uh, Nini and Ricky being back together. Do we see more heat uh, happening between the two? Will the love prevail this season? Please give us a little bit. <laughs> it would not be High School Musical Musical Series if it was not a roller coaster. I just <laughs> learned that, but we got there. Um, so, you know, just buckle up and uh, enjoy the ride. I, I can't tell you anything without getting in trouble. So there Sorry. you go, fans, everyone listening. He cannot. <laughs> tell it. it is not my fault. <laughs> I'll tell you, though, it's very much worth your your watch if you if you do want to sit down and watch it. But I can't give you any of the uh, inside information, you know. You know, something obviously that you know everything about is yourself, your life, your career. Um, what would you say was the turning point for you getting high school musical? Um, because I know I was reading an article, you almost quit acting before landing the job, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually almost quit acting like about a month before I got the job. Like it was it was pretty close. I, I had a phone call with my dad where it was like, it was audition after audition of me getting really close to things. And the reason why I wasn't getting them was always like ridiculous. It was like either somebody had like a larger social media platform or some ridiculous reason. And I was like, I, I don't expect to be getting any roles, but it's it, when it's for these reasons, it's really hard to keep your head up and be like, oh, this is, you know, it's like, so anyway, I was just getting really frustrated. And I remember telling my dad, like the joy of it is gone. I don't enjoy it anymore. Like it's not something I want to do. And he's like, okay, well, if you don't want to do it, then you don't have to do it. He's like, you've gone this far. Why don't you just wait it out a month? You know? And I was like, okay, fine. I was like, I waited out a month because I was ready to quit that day. Um, and then just about a month later is when I got the show. So pretty crazy. So dad was right. Dad was right. Yes, exactly. How are you navigating things? It's always interesting to me, again, knowing your journey to get to where you are today and having that moment of, you know, these next 30 days, I, I may just try one more time and see what happens. Mm -hmm. This is kind of newfound fame for you in a sense, right? How, uh, how, yeah. Okay. More, yeah, it's like heightening every time, you know, someone talks yeah. to you. How do you navigate that? How has it been for you? Um, as someone who started, obviously, acting at, I think you said eight years old, I've read before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did musical theater when I was like seven or eight and just yeah. sort of did that a lot. So you, you're kind of used to like putting yourself out there. That part, you know, you, you kind of do get used to. But, I, you know, I think... It, it, it's just like it gets so beyond your control that it's just like you just kind of have to let it go like you really there's nothing you can do there's certain steps you can take but at the end of the day you just realize like you know people saying stuff and doing whatever like you know you can't take it personally because most of it's not well informed and most of it is not true and most of it they don't even realize that you're a human being and so even the good either good and the bad you all kind of, you just have to kind of like take it as it is and, and sort of let it go and, and ebb and flow with it. And, and it can for sure be challenging, but you know, uh, it's a good teacher just letting go and accepting what is because you, you can't change it. Absolutely. Um, high school musical local production. Is it true that you were a part of that? It, that the rumors are true. And I've said it in like literally a hundred and a half <laughs> interviews, like seriously. Yeah. But yeah, it is true. Does it, do you, does it blow your mind? Do you remember those moments being eight? 
like back. I do. I do. I could go back right now and picture myself on stage as a little eight year old or seven year old, like doing doing the scenes as a JV jock. I was I was terrible at basketball. I did like this one crossover that they did where I was supposed to go and see this, like mini cheerleader, and I was supposed to like flip my uh, or you know do the basketball, and then. Um, I did not get it right a single rehearsal or a single show. And I'm pretty sure they just cut the bit entirely because I just could not live up to it. So anyway, my basketball skills have not improved since. So, um, you know, but I think I'm doing all right. You're doing okay. We don't need the basketball skills. <laughs> Who needs um, I, I love taking you back though. Again, I, Grey's Anatomy. Have you talked mm -hmm. about that recently? I know you had two episodes of that. Yes. Yeah, that was wild. How did that come about? Well, what was the process like for you to do that? I actually booked it right after I booked High School Musical. So I booked High School Musical, and then like a week later, I had the audition for Grey's Anatomy. And I genuinely was like, I don't even know if I can shoot these episodes because I'm going to be filming. And so there was like that pressure was gone of like, you know, what I was just like, oh, whatever, you know, I'll do it. That's always when it works, by the way, is when you don't have that pressure on yourself to like book it. Anyway, um, I uh, so I went in and I did the scene and then you know when I uh, went to go shoot it it was just like I was super tired from the night before and it really worked in my favor because I was supposed to look like a complete crackhead because I, I was one so anyway uh, it was it was fun to like just play like a different role entirely and then go to be like you know the skater high school kid um, you know it's fun to switch it up every now and then. Absolutely. Um, I want to go back to the music for a second. Your new single, Feel Something. Um, yes. What was the inspiration behind that? And, and, and outside of that, moving forward in music, do you have a collaboration you really want to get done? Mm. Well, I do. I'll, I'll answer that one first because Harry Styles is number one on my list, as is like, you know, the rest of the world. But um, that's just, that would be the most incredible experience in the world. So I can't wait for that to happen, universe. Um, and uh, and then in terms of my song, Feel Something, it was um, one of those songs that I was literally on a walk. I decided to go and walk and I kind of had to walk for like an hour and a half because I was going to Uber and I was like, I'm just going to walk. Anyway, it was a long walk. It starts raining and there's like thunder and lightning. And out of nowhere, I just got this inspo and I pulled out my phone and did a voice memo and it was just like, it was just like stream of consciousness sort of thing. Yeah. I just like kept going, kept going, kept going. And then... Um, the next day I had a session with some people, obviously everybody got tested beforehand and, you know, but we had, we had a session and I was like, Oh, you know what? I had this idea last night in the rain and I just like brought it up and immediately they were like, yes, let's do it. So we just ran with it. And then Eric came out. I won't tell you the backstory behind the song just cause I wanted to speak for itself. Uh, but it was one of those cool, like lightning striking songs. Um, why it's a wild question over here, but this is the last one. Cause I think we got a wrap celebrity crush growing. Up. Did you have one? I did. And I have a, yeah. Okay. I have a great story about it. So Hillary Duff always, it was always Hillary Duff. And I went to D23 in 2019 and she was there and Gary Marsh from Disney introduced me to her. And then when I walked away, apparently she told him that she had a crush on me. So all I'm saying is my life is complete. And uh, I don't know if it's true or not that she said that, but I'm taking it to my grave that she did. 